So, if you don't know what a stellium is in astrology, it's when there are multiple planets that are hanging out in a certain sign or they're hanging out in a certain house. So I have an 8th house stellium. I have three planets in my 8th house. The 8th house is ruled by Scorpio. Um, it is the house of sex, death, regeneration, taxes, things that are hidden and not easily seen. I have my moon, my Mars, and my Jupiter here. Now, moon in any house um, is going to cause more disruption there because it changes out of signs so consistently that it causes some disruption there. The moon is all about your emotional realm and the things that you feel, the way you express yourself, how things affect you emotionally, how you react to things emotionally. So when your moon sign is in the eighth house, these things are hidden from you and they're also hidden from other people. And that's when you wind up in your room at two in the morning crying by yourself because you don't know how to express anything to anyone without them running away or being scared. And you also don't always know how you feel because you've been taught for so long to push your emotions down and to hide them because every time you felt something, because you feel it so deeply and so strongly, it scares people, so you hide it. You see the vicious cycle that's created with this? <sighs> Having your Mars here, Mars is not happy in the 8th house, it causes a ruckus in the 8th house, and my Mars is in Virgo, which is all about analyzing practicality, being selfless, um, doing hard analytical work, um, being of service perpetually. And when you put this in the eighth house of hidden things, you can become super selfless. You can pour too much of yourself into other people while also feeling internally that you don't know how to express still any of how you are feeling. When you have this placement, it's also common for you to be bullied by other people because your Mars placement, which is your drive and action, is hidden from you, so people project their own anger and rage from that Mars energy onto you because it's in the Scorpionic house. This is something that has rung true for me. Um, I was basically bullied up until ninth grade, I believe. Uh, people would make fun of me for my hair, they make fun of me for my skin, they make fun of me for my eyes, they make fun of me for my smile, for my teeth, for my name, how I talked, literally anything you could think of. And I think that although it was obviously stressful and not a fun thing to experience, because I moved so often, I knew it wasn't always going to last forever. So I was like, well, I'll only probably be at the school for half a year. I'll probably only be at the school for a year, and then I'll be able to leave. So this already created the idea that whatever trauma people place on me or any kind of negative energy that's placed on me, I'm like, oh, well, I can handle it. It won't last forever. And that's also a very unhealthy thing to do. And you, when your moon is in your eighth house, all these things that are affecting you emotionally that you're supposed to process in your moon placement are also being hidden or pushed down. And... I think what's so difficult about having the moon and Mars here specifically is because I'm not trying to sound like a specific way when I say that I feel things very deeply, but I feel things very deeply. And I'm guessing it's at a level because the 8th house is the Scorpionic house, it's at a deeper level than most people live on or can understand or tap into. And so there have been times where I've tried to show just an ounce, a very small portion of this, and the reactions were not good. Um, it didn't feel receptive, or my intuition was telling me, you, you can't trust this person anyway, or you shouldn't tell that person anyway, they're not going to understand. And the times that I even have, it was never at the realm where I knew that they understood, they were just trying to listen. And because they couldn't grasp what I was expressing, I just kind of stopped doing it. And, um... I guess if you have an 8th house stellium, you know how much this sucks because you're feeling everything you and all you want is for someone else to tell you that they feel it too. All you want is for someone else to let you know, yes, I feel exactly how you feel. I know where you're at. I know 
how because the eighth house is very because it is scorpionic it is ruled by water it's like being submerged underwater and there are so many feelings and emotions down there that you're trying to process and you're not coming up for air ever because it's hidden so you need someone who can go into the water with you you need someone who can go down there with you and it's just kind of uh, frustrating to have these placements because then you realize that you've spent literally all of the years of your life never having been able to truly tell anyone what it is you're really feeling or how deeply you are feeling something or affected by something. People think that you're exaggerating or that you're trying to get attention when in reality you literally just are receiving so much energy from around you because the eighth house understands those subconscious things. You're picking up energy from other people's subconscious as well. And it's scorpionic, so your intuition is even more heightened. I think, I mean, I understand that not everyone's going to have a birth chart like mine. Everyone is on a different path. But I honestly am just waiting to meet someone who has some eighth house placements so I won't feel like the only time like I can ever truly be myself is when I'm alone by myself in the middle of the night where I feel like no other energy is really like ramming into my head. Recognizing that I can't share those things with anybody or that it scares people away and it's not like I constantly need to do it. I just feel like I need to do it one time. Just, just know that I can do it out here in this world one time. And it's like, imagine you're having all these emotions come up from other people, from trauma that you've experienced as a child, from people bullying you, all these things that you're taking in and you're not able to express any of this because it's hidden from you or you're hiding it because people always react so negatively to you expressing something that you have all of these different natural disasters occurring inside of you. It feels like a volcano is erupting inside of you. It feels like a tornado is running through you, a hurricane, a tsunami. is all inside and it never gets to come out because no one ever wants to deal with it or be open to it. And even if someone tells you that they want to, the second that you start, you already see an averseness to it or you see a deviation in the conversation that takes it out of the realm, the only realm that you're trying to get out of. And I really feel like if I could explain what 8th house feels like, um, the only time I've ever been able to feel like I've been understood is not from other people. It's been through music and it's been through movies. And I remember watching Mother. I don't know if you've seen this, um, but if you've seen Mother, I don't want to explain it because it's a good movie, you should watch it, but if you're imagining that the house that this woman is in with her partner, there's a bunch of crazy shit that's going on, but I have a theory about what the movie's about, but there's a bunch of crazy shit that's going on in the house, and she's freaking out, trying to keep everything, like, nice and in order, and, like, having harmony and flow, and no one's listening to her, no one's paying attention to her, she's trying to get help, no one's literally like acknowledging that sh her presence is even there and that's what it feels like it feels like when you have an eighth house stellium you have all these things that you've got inside and you're trying to like have just someone understand because she wasn't even trying to be like hey fix this for me she just wanted help and so you're going around trying to find someone and literally no one's even they can't because a lot of people can't even go there they can't even acknowledge it and so I think people who have this placement are very strong, very resilient people because there's a lot of work that is done alone when you have 8th house placements. There's a lot of emotions and feelings that you process by yourself because there's like no one else who can do it with you. And it is sad and it is frustrating, um, but the thing that has kept me still open and kind to other people and not taking the pain that I felt and the trauma that I feel and like making other people feel that is because I'm understanding and I've understood since a child like that the things that were happening to me or the things that people were doing to me or the way people were treating me not all of them were very um, intelligent or very awake or um, had a soul um, in a way where I understood oh they don't they're they don't live on the same wavelength as me so they're not gonna understand this it's okay they don't understand 
and although that is like obviously nice to allow other people to make mistakes and do these things all this is still nice that you're able to recognize that through other people and allow them the room to have made mistakes and to have done things that maybe they didn't necessarily understand what they were doing it doesn't help when you're an adult and you're still trying to find someone who is going to be open to going there with you but I do have one other planet in my 8th house which is Jupiter and Jupiter is a benevolent planet it expands things it is a gifting lucky planet a lucky sign I think this is the only reason why I've been able to kind of keep going and not feel completely like all hope is lost and finding that I can connect to someone deeply in this world because Jupiter expands what it's placed in. So it expands the 8th house which also rules occult knowledge, um, the esoteric, the hidden things. Jupiter wants to learn and grow and expound upon and philosophize and so I do this in the 8th house which is probably why I am deeply interested in spirituality which is why I am deeply interested in understanding how everything works, why everything works a certain way, what's making them tick, what's doing this, what's doing that. and. I think that because Jupiter is helping me to expand in that direction, I've been able to leave some of the negative things that come from Mars being here and from Moon being in here. But if you have an 8th house stellium, you also know that most of your partnerships have been traumatic um, or the relationships you've had have not been at the depth that you're seeking, even if you thought they might be at one point. Um, when you have things placed in the 8th house, it rules sex, and so sex is a very important aspect of my life, and it always has been. Whether it was a negative interaction or a positive interaction, it was important to the tapestry that is making up my life experience. And I don't know if the people who I have previously been with are going to watch this, but it is what it is, and I've already kind of expressed this to them, but even because you can't express or people aren't open or comfortable with you expressing how something makes you feel or something that you're picking up on or your intuition is picking up on because you're not really expressing these things because the eighth house does rule the unseen and unspoken because those things aren't being pulled up I integrate more of the sexual aspects of the eighth house the scorpionic houses and so when you have moon Mars Jupiter I'm connecting to my emotions through sex. I'm connecting to my passion and my drive through sex. I'm expanding my life experience and my knowledge of who I am through sexual interactions. And with my partners, that was something that I always noticed was that I would want to connect in that way and that it was always, that's a very big deal for me, which is why I don't casually date. I don't use dating apps. I'm very like if I'm not with someone, I'm not with anyone, and that's just that. And it's because, for me, sex is the only time that someone is going to be open and willing to sharing a deeper part of themselves in a way that I'm always longing to do, even outside of sex. So I'm like, well, this is the only experience in which I'm going to be able to um, maybe have an ounce of that. And aside from those placements, I do just have a lot of sexual tendency placements, but this isn't something that people know about me or something that people see because it's in the 8th house. It is hidden. So even though if I have a strong sexual drive and sexual energy, it's not something that I am openly and honestly expressing with people because I am very selective and I want to make sure that the people that I do connect with are someone that I can truly understand, truly feel with, truly grow with, and the partners that I had been with, even if we had connected intimately, they still felt very far away. They still felt like they were in the 3D realm is the best way to explain it. Like they were very much just like, this is sex, I'm having sex. And for me, sex isn't just sex. Um, and... <laughs> I guess, I don't know, I'm sure there are plenty of people who feel that sex is more than that who don't have an 8th house stellium, but for me, it's so important in helping me to understand how to express myself, to understand myself, to release myself. That is the only atmosphere in this world where I feel a truly where I truly feel like myself, in my sexual realm and my sexual energy. And you don't always have to 
me having sex with someone to channel this. It's just why I am a highly sexualized person. So I can channel my sexual energy into creative aspects. I can channel into art. I can channel into music. I can channel into dance. But because I'm longing for a connection where someone truly understands what I'm feeling, that in turn explains if you have this placement why when you're with someone you really want to feel every possible thing that you can with that person you want them to understand every part of you you want them to be able to see every part of you you want them to be able to go underwater and truly feel how you're feeling and be like i'm I f i'm there with you too i feel that too and the partners that i had just even if it was a 3D physical connection where I could feel that I was in my body, they still felt very far away. And it would leave me feeling still like, okay, well, I guess maybe I'm just not going to get that. But if you have an 8th health stellium, I just want you to understand that you are not alone. It is difficult. Um, it's something that does make you stronger, though. It is something that makes you understand that where some people will constantly live above the water and be breathing and seeing the air and the sky that you're able to go very deeply where most people don't want to go people are afraid to go that's where you live and although you can try and come up to the air you need someone who's going to be able to go down there with you in order for you to truly feel understood and don't sacrifice that for anyone because then you'll wind up in relationships where you're like oh they'll come down here eventually they'll swim down to the bottom with me they'll do it once they once they feel a little more comfortable and it's it's it they won't <laughs> unless they truly honestly are acknowledging and see it and sense it in you i i i don't want to classify and say that only other eighth house people will be able to do this with you but they should have some kind of understanding of the darker aspects of life the deeper parts of emotion the full spectrum of emotion every shade that you can feel and i kind of just wanted to talk a little bit about this only because it's been incredibly frustrating to try and deal with these placements and recognize that you go throughout your life thinking that you'll meet lots of people who will touch this for you and there aren't and it just kind of sucks <laughs> um, but in the same way that I said that things are difficult and lonely they can be very beautiful because you'll feel things that other people will never feel you'll understand emotions that other people will never understand um, there have been so many times where I have watched something and felt so moved because I understood and other people would like laugh or like say it's stupid um, or just be like, well, I can't believe that you're so emotional over this. And it's because they don't understand um, that there's never been a time for an eighth house stellium person to feel validated like that. Um, through interactions in their real life which is why I feel like it can kind of be dangerous um, if you have the 8th house be careful to make sure you really ground yourself in reality because you can create escapist tendencies because you need to go somewhere where you feel understood and I've been lucky enough and aware enough of my bad habits and patterns that I can know what is good and not good for me and when to utilize and not utilize something but I just want there to be some other person who watches this video who has an 8th house stellium who feels understood, who feels validated um, because it is hard and you're burning on the inside and nobody sees it and I smile and I'm I'm happy when I see other people and I want other people to be happy like I can I'm usually smiling and I'm usually approachable and you don't sense this within me but that's because what I'm feeling in there I don't need to put on my face because I'm not trying to share that trauma with anyone else I'm not trying to share these emotions I haven't expressed and put that on other people I still know that that isn't for them to deal with and so I can separate that but some people can't 
And so while I still do these things, that doesn't mean like, and there are a lot of people who do this, they, they're smiling and they, they're willing to do that for other people, but there's so much that's going on inside that they can't express or that they don't know how to express or they're afraid to express. And honestly, it is kind of scary because there have been many times where you're willing to open up and you're going to share something with somebody and you're like, I'm about to be understood. I'm about to, I'm about to feel like they understand and then they don't. And then you just go back in your room and you start crying again and you, you have to let your emotions out if you have this placement. This is something... I'm so tired of living in a world where the second someone cries or expresses an emotion, people are so disgusted and averse to it because that is such an unhealthy way to treat the human experience by cutting off half of the experience that is going to help you to grow and acknowledge things that you're feeling. If you don't acknowledge those emotions and things that you're feeling, you're not going to grow and you're not going to heal. If you're holding things in, you're repressing and then that stuff doesn't get brought up to be reflected on and then left behind. So please feel what you're feeling. Please recognize that if you have these placements that a lot of you is hidden away or that you hide it and that it's okay that you do that, but make sure that at some point in time you bring it to the surface and you recognize that it's there. You recognize that it makes you stronger, that it makes you more intuitive, it makes you more empathetic because you truly do understand. When someone is feeling something and you say you understand, it's not just to lend a sympathetic like sentence. It's literally because you understand. Um, gosh. I just really felt moved to share this just because I've been so frustrated with these placements in myself that I thought that talking about them would kind of help me to process what I was feeling about them. Because I feel like they, the only thing that they've done, I mean, obviously they have made me more wise or um, understanding of the human nature but they've just been very isolating for me and I've I mean I've technically kind of isolated myself by my on my own terms anyway because I needed to process and I needed to heal a lot of things but then when you sit and recognize that wow it's gonna be real hard to find somebody who's gonna be open enough to share their side of things with you too um, and be open to you sharing yours and this isn't something I think you should sacrifice if you have an eighth house stellium. Do not. There is going to be someone that you're going to find, and you're going to know it when you look at them. You're going to feel it. It's going to hit you in a deeper spot than you've ever been hit before. Because when you are hiding these things underneath the surface all the time, it is subconscious. And when someone else is hiding all those things all the time, in their subconscious, those things connect subconsciously. And before you can consciously recognize it, you just feel it. And you know. And when you go with that, I'm trying to like help you manifest this eighth house stellium. I'm trying to help you manifest this. When you feel that and you connect to that, don't be afraid. Don't run away from it. Just allow it to be. Take your time. Say something. Share something see what you get. Share something else. They share something else. See what you get. At some point, spirit, your spirit guides, your angels, God, your ancestors, however you want to term it, they're going to find someone who understands and they will be placed upon your path and you'll be able to finally, <laughs> finally feel like, wow, I can really just be me. I can really express something. And I honestly feel like for 8th house person, you do need someone who has either an 8th house or scorpionic placements to understand you. Because if, if they don't have that tendency, they're not really going to truly know. And when you have this placement, you need, so, you need to know that they truly know. Otherwise, you're going to constantly feel that no one really understands. No one, and I hate that like phrase, no one understands me, but it really is um, very like very very much so the truth of this placement is no one truly understands unless they they're in it with you they've been through it um and like i said there will be someone who's placed on your past who does experience this you will find them they will feel the same as you you will know that intuitively you will feel that intuitively because you have these placements in you that do that don't run away from it 
open yourself up to it. When you have eighth house stellium, sex is very important to you. This is going to be, you're going to know through sex probably if this person is going to understand every part of yourself. And for eighth house stellium people as well, um, sex does play a very large important role and sometimes I feel like that can be taken the wrong way and people think like, oh you're just trying to like have sex, oh you're just trying to do this and this and that, but really it is a very strong way that 8th house stellium people understand if their partner can truly understand them because that is when an 8th house person truly feels like themselves is in their sexual expression when they're able to channel all of that energy out of themselves and pour love into someone else and someone else is pouring love into them understanding how they're feeling understanding their trauma and trying to help heal each other I think that is a very beautiful thing I don't know why some people have such negative feelings towards doing that but Everyone has their own traumas to heal. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I think I'm done. Honestly, it's just been like so interesting living here and just being alone when I'm not at work. Like I go to work, then I come home and I just sit in my room and I journal and I meditate and make videos and then I'm just like, wow, you chose this. You did this to yourself. But I really do feel like... Um, Eighth house stellium people, you are strong, stronger than you realize. Crying is okay, screaming is okay, sex is okay. Do not be afraid of your sexual nature. I'm probably going to make more specific video for eighth house people just about the sexual side of it because it is very intricate based on placements. But this is a side of myself that I've always felt like I have to hide that is hidden because it is eighth house or because, you know, girls shouldn't like sex or girls shouldn't be interested in a lot of sex or, you know, however society wants to claim that type of stereotype. But this is very important for an eighth house person to embrace in themselves, to learn how to use to heal yourself, to grow, um, make sure that you're not using your sexual energy to pour your trauma onto someone else. Make sure you're using your sexual energy to transmute, to shift, to reform, and to reintegrate and to become a stronger and more intuitive and healing person. You're a very healing person for a lot of people and a lot of people probably feel safe to come to you and tell you a lot of things and you need to be in your healthiest state of mind in order to give the best advice to them. Okay, eighth housers, we're gonna be okay. It is kind of lonely, but we're used to that so everything should be fine. <laughs> you will find that one day. I hope you find it within yourself first. And then the person that you share it with never stops sharing it with you and isn't afraid of it. Peace and love.